Hey art nerds, remember how I said with the last watercolor chat video that that was the last watercolor chat video and then I talked myself into doing two more? Well, here we are today to chat and paint and today's subject is Tanner. Tanner is a, uh, he's one of the characters from 7-Inch Kara. He has officially shown up one time and yet he is very popular with people which I'm really glad they like him. He does show up in a lot of supplemental material and he is going to be making a big appearance in volume three. And he's one of Kara's best friends and one of the other, or one of the few Lilliputian children she actually knows. So today I am painting Tanner holding a container of Mugicha or barley tea. And I really like barley tea. Um, you guys have heard me expound the virtues of every tea I've painted. I mean, this is a really self-indulgent series and in that it's an excuse for me to talk about teas I like. And I don't, I mean, barley tea isn't necessarily like truly a tea in that it is not made with tea leaves. It's more like an infusion, but it is delicious, healthful, and refreshing. It's made from barley grains that are steeped. It can be enjoyed hot or cold. I prefer it cold and I think it is a great summertime drink. Whenever I have some barley tea after I've been out working in the yard or riding my bike or just doing anything where the sun has depleted my energy with its intense heat, barley tea helps me feel not just hydrated but more refreshed. So normally during the summer, I try to have a instant packet steeping in my fridge at all times. And there's a few brands that you can get like on Amazon where you can cold brew it. Although it's also recommended that you hot brew it and then ice it. So it's really up to you. If you're gonna cold brew it, you of course really need to let it brew for a long time, a couple hours at least. I'll link those in the description below as well as links to the other watercolor chats in this series and some other watercolor tutorials that you guys might enjoy. This channel is full of watercolor tutorials and watercolor series. So if you're interested in learning how to paint, let me show you how I handle watercolor for illustration. So right off the bat, let's talk about hero colors. My hero colors for today's illustration are yellow ochre. And yellow ochre is one of those great watercolors where they tend to be good regardless of the brand. So you can kind of just go with whatever is most economical to you and whichever has working properties that you like the best. And like with my last video where I listed alizarin crimson as one of my hero colors, Yellow ochre is one of those colors that I use all the time, both on its own and in mixes. It's a real workhorse for my palette. And when I'm reviewing watercolor, I always try to make sure there's a yellow ochre either included in the set or I buy a yellow ochre to use in the set because it's such an important part of how I mix colors. So it's definitely an unsung hero in my watercolor illustration. On that note, uh, I'm torn between saying the other hero color is Windsor & Newton Payne's Gray, which I use all the time, much in the same vein as Yellow Ochre, and it's being used or will be used in the bottle of Mugicha. Right now you can see it, and I really like it because it is a super useful gray. Yeah, you can mix it yourself. It is a convenience color. I believe off the top of my head, it's ultramarine mixed with burnt sienna. And sometimes I go that route rather than using the premix one because I want that specific granulation to show. But it's a convenience color that I use all the time, particularly when I'm painting glass. The other convenience color, or rather, sorry, the other hero color I'm tempted, I want to talk about, is Sennelier's Chinese Orange, which is the color that I'm using on Tanner's shirt here. And it's a warm, rich orange, not too saturated. It's got good earthy tones, good earthy vibes. And it's another color that I use frequently when I'm painting Kara or her other Lilliputian friends because it is a fun color. It's a bright orange, but it's not an unnatural color. It wouldn't stand out too much in nature. And it's right on the edge of being an earth tone. So it's definitely a color that Lilliputians would utilize often.
So every watercolor chat, I try to talk about something that's either going on in my life or just something that's been on my mind or something I'm thinking about. And while I was in the middle of recording narration for this video, it was brought to my attention that YouTube is not allowing people to set the notifications for my channel, despite my channel not necessarily being marked as for kids, but being marked as let me decide for every video. And I, I, for like five minutes, I tried to kind of get over my feelings about it. And then I was like, you know what? No, let me talk about this. So those of you who watch this channel, you know I try to make our content for all ages, which is a challenge. You know, you can do stuff for very young viewers and that has kind of specific ways of doing it. You can do things for adults and that appeal mostly just to adults. And I wanted to do something that was kind of more for everyone because I really like cartooning, I really like illustration, and I want it to be accessible for anybody who wants to try and learn it. Whether they're a little kid working with a parent, whether they're a teenager, whether they're an adult who is new or picking it up all over again, I wanted to create stuff that was accessible. And for a while I had the channel marked as for kids because of some advice that had been given at the time when YouTube was really pushing that on a lawyer who had a YouTube channel on YouTube who basically was like if you have a cartoony art style you might as well mark your stuff for kids and I had a lot of problems with that because I watch a lot of LPs and a lot of video games especially indie video games have cartoony art styles and then have a lot of cursing or they have like really mature themes so to force creators to mark their stuff as for kids because it happens to have a cartoony art style is really dangerous because we already really struggle to convince people that not everything cartoony is for kids and that cartoons can be for adults and that cartoons can utilize a fun and, a, and approachable art style to cover heavy topics for adults. You know, there's a lot of nuance there, and as somebody who has a master's in sequential art, there's a lot of history there as well, from the comics code to moral outrages over video games like Night Trap, to people who just look at something and take it for face value and then dismiss anything else that it might be. And while a lot of the comics I create Oh, there are there four kids in the same way Ghibli movies are for kids. I want them to appeal to an all ages audience. I want them to cover occasionally more mature themes, but in a way that younger viewers can enjoy and understand. And I want there to be something kind of evergreen. That's like my goal. Maybe I'm not there yet, but that's my goal with my content is to create things that can be evergreen, that you can enjoy it at 10, you can enjoy it at 20, you can enjoy it at 50. Kind of like the giving tree. There's always something there for you. That's one of my goals. Um, I think content made to be enjoyed in the moment is valid and useful and that it has its own place, but that isn't necessarily the kind of content that I want to do or the kind of stories I want to tell or the kind of tutorials I want to make. I want to make tutorials that are going to be just as useful, maybe a little dated in terms of how I recorded it or how I was talking or how I was dressed at the time, but just as useful five years from now as they were the day they were recorded. In fact, it, my channel is a slow burn kind of place where it takes a really long time for my stuff to build up steam and I'm always surprised by what's really popular on the channel as opposed to what just kind of flops. Now I'm going to try and talk to YouTube about this and see what's going on. Maybe it's a software problem. My channel has had a lot of those in the past. In fact, there is an issue for a while where my channel doesn't display new videos, so I have to go in and manually add them to like a new and whatever month playlist just to get them to show up. And I have to say, when I am fighting against these sort of things, it just progressively makes it harder to want to continue to use YouTube and to want to continue to share things on YouTube because my channel is such a small channel and it does take such a long time to build up views on a video. So I don't know, it's kind of weighing on my mind and I'm going to try to solve it, but I do feel like YouTube doesn't really give smaller creators as much help in fighting algorithm problems or fighting software problems or fighting site glitches as they give their larger creators 
And yes, I am continually reminded by my husband that YouTube is providing basically free hosting for my video content. But I, I see this as a bit of a partnership. The smaller channels are the channels that most people see as more authentic. You know, like I've said in all my other videos, I don't have a corporate sponsor. This isn't brought to you by Radon or Audible or NordVPN. And frankly, I would never take a sponsorship from a VPN company because it creates a false sense of security in its users. And I just am not about that life. I married a computer scientist. I don't need to deceive you guys in order to make a little extra coin. But um, I don't have a corporate sponsor. So... <sighs> I lost track of my line of thought. I'm so sorry. Anyway, oh, 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 so my opinions about art supplies are my opinions about art supplies. I bought them with my money, either money that I earned doing conventions or selling books or working on Kara or through Patreon, which I'm very grateful for, or they were given to me as a present by a my mother or my husband, not by the company. There's a few exceptions where, like Color It has sent me their alcohol markers to review in the past, and Milo Art sent me their pro markers to review in the past, but I would say 90% of what I talk about on this channel is stuff I've purchased and stuff I either love and use or hate and have to rehome. So for small channels like mine to continue to exist, YouTube needs to be more responsive in handling problems like this that prevent the people who enjoy our videos and use our videos and learn from our videos from actually accessing and finding out when our videos have gone live. Now I didn't go into this video thinking I'm gonna, I was gonna chat about YouTube. Uh, generally, for the most part, I try to keep my opinions to myself because I have kind of a neutral opinion on YouTube. They're not my friend, they're not my buddy. I host my videos on YouTube, but I, I don't feel any like specific loyalty to YouTube as a company or to Google as a company. So, you know, that's my opinion. But it is frustrating as a smaller creator to have these kind of hiccups and hurdles and oh my gosh, the FTC stuff regarding whether your stuff was for children or wasn't for children. And YouTube was going to provide basically no help and no clarification whatsoever. They were just like, it's up to you. Good luck. Hire a lawyer. And there was a period of time where I was like, I absolutely would not hire a lawyer for this. But I'm at the point now where I would hire a lawyer for this because I create... First of all, I've turned off the targeting targeted interest ads. I don't want to collect information on my viewers at all. YouTube is the one choosing to do that. And I am creating content that is hopefully useful to artists and aspiring artists of all ages. So I would definitely try to fight that one. I'm a comic artist who enjoys making cartoony art and I like looking at cartoony art. And just because something is cartoony doesn't mean it's for kids. And just because an illustration was made to be used in a children's book doesn't mean the tutorial on how to create that illustration was intended specifically to appeal to children. I mean, that would just make SCBWI entirely intended for children, the Society of Children Books Writers and Illustrators. And I don't think they let anybody join if they're under the age of 18. So. Um, yeah, I think at this point I would, I would lawyer up and, uh, fight FTC claims that my content was intentionally aimed at children and not marked as such. I do have videos here that are aimed at much, much younger creators, kiddos, and I do mark them. And I usually don't have any monetization on them whatsoever because I really am not interested in YouTube collecting data on them. But outside of that, I mean, I've said this before, I think if you are a younger viewer, you should be watching these videos with your parents. They should be monitoring what you're watching on YouTube. I do have a problem with kids who are just allowed to watch YouTube unsupervised because there's a lot of really bad negative stuff here. And I don't want you guys getting the wrong idea about what life is like and I think it's helpful for your parents to sit there and watch with you guys so they can explain things that you might not understand or you might not know why people are doing things that way. And so you don't think people like Logan and Jake Paul are the norm or that that kind of behavior is ac mm -hmm. acceptable. So sorry this watercolor chat got kind of opinionated. Uh, 
I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway, and I hope I'll see you guys again soon with another watercolor video or another art video or maybe an art stream. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you guys are safe and healthy, and I look forward to doing the Naomi tea illustration with you guys in the near future. So have a wonderful day, guys. I hope this was helpful, useful, and inspiring, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye, guys.